Good morning, it's me, Kenny Polkari, and I am your host of the party. Today is Friday, April 21st, 2023, and boy, it has been a long week, right? So here's what you need to know. Stocks continue to meander with a bias to the downside. Earnings are what they are. Guidance is cautious, and that's causing stocks to continue to struggle, right? The ego data is slowing, yet the Fed appears as if they want to continue to push ahead. And you got to ask, is the VIX getting ready to explode higher? And what are we have with tonight? We're having the easy pork loin. It's a great dish, simple to make, always be a fan favorite. Okay, look. It has been a bit boring lately. Stocks continue to struggle for direction with little to no drama. We're now one full week into earnings, which haven't been so bad. The big money center banks did just as we expected. And the regional banks are doing as we expected. But now we're moving into other sectors and we're about to find out uh, and get some insight into what the rest of the economy is doing and how it's performing. So far, earnings beats have been running at about 72%, right? That's just about the average. But remember, the bar has been lowered. Estimates have come way down. And while companies are beating these lowered estimates, let's not kid ourselves. Earnings are weak. So anyone who misses better have a good reason. And anyone who misses and doesn't pre-announce should have an even better reason because investors remain very critical of managements that surprise to the downside when they could have uh, uh, revealed it ahead of time in a, pre, in a pre-announcement. So look, Tesla and Telephone are just two of the latest examples. Now, Telephone beat ever so slightly and Tesla missed ever so slightly. But both offered guidance that could have been disclosed a week ago. Telephone said that the slowing economy is hurting future demand, so investors took that stock down 10%. It's Telephone. And Tesla, well, they've been slashing prices. They've been putting pressure on their margins as they sacrifice margins for market share. And investors weren't happy with that either. So they took that stock down 10% as well. Now look, 10% on Tesla might make some sense, right? I'm surprised it actually wasn't more because it's a sexy high growth name with lots of excitement. It was up 40% year to date. So a pullback of 10% is not that surprising. But 10% for telephone? Telephone's a big, boring, not sexy name. Right? They're a core holding in many mature portfolios. They pay a 6.3% divvy, and, and, and people hold it because of its stability. They were only up 6% in a year, so yesterday's 10% move lower was a very big surprise. I mean, it's telephone. So what's going on here? Look, all together, profits this quarter are expected to fall by about 6% versus last year's 10% increase. But we knew this. The decline of profits should not be a surprise. But when it becomes a reality, investors suddenly become more concerned, right? Concerned that the recession we've been talking about for more than a year is now knocking on the door. While the earnings are beating the lower estimates, it is the tone of the guidance that is causing stocks to struggle. The C-suite is concerned. More layoffs are being announced. Guidance is weaker than expected. And inflation remains stubborn and sticky, and that is causing the Fed narrative to change as well. First it was talk of no May rate hike, right? Then it turned to, okay, maybe one more hike. Now it's turned into maybe more hikes, plural, and that is causing the latest round of weakness. Will the Fed take the terminal rate to five, five and a quarter, or will they take it to five and a half, five seventy-five? And what will be the event that that uh, drives prices in the, in the next week or so, right? What will JJ say at the press conference on May 3rd? Will he be hawkish? Will that be the event? In addition, the latest economic data is also suggesting slowing growth. Initial jobless claims rose by 5,000 yesterday. Mortgage apps fell by nearly 9%. Philly Fed plunges to the negative 31. Existing home sales fell more than expected. Down 2.4% versus the expected 1.8. And the leading economic indicators also came in worse than the expected, down 1.2%. So where did you see most of the weakness yesterday? Communication stocks was down 1%. Think telephone. Consumer discretionary, XLY, down 1.5%. Think recession. Real estate, XLRE, down 1.2%. And energy, down 8%. Think uh, 8 tenths of a percent, excuse me. Think rate hike worries. The only sector in the green yesterday was consumer staples, the XLP, and that rose by a quarter of a percent. Think all the stuff you need no matter what the economy is doing, right? 
the VIX, which is the fear index, which has fallen to a new year-to-date low, rose by four and a quarter percent and is up again this morning. Recall that as the VIX declines, it suggests that investors are complacent and stocks typically tend to move up, which is exactly what we've seen. But when it's at its lows is usually when it turns. And when the VIX rises, it suggests rising fear in the market. Now, over the past three days, it's begun to creep up. So keep your eyes on what this does, right? Because the tone can change very quickly. You can play the fear index by buying the VIXY, V-I-X-Y, which is the Pro Share Short-Term Long Futures ETF. When you buy it, you are betting that fear will rise. The VIX will spike higher and stocks will decline. So yesterday, the VIX rose by four and a quarter percent, and the VIXY rose by 2.2 percent. While the Dow lost three tenths, the S&P was down six tenths, the Nasdaq lost eight tenths, and the Russell lost uh, six tenths. Now, year to date, the VIXY is down 29 percent, and that makes complete sense. The VIX is at the low of the year, and stocks are teasing the highs of the year. And investors do not appear to be concerned that there is an event at all that's about to happen. And that's exactly when you need to be worried about the VIX, right? Because that's exactly when the event happens, when no one expects it. Now, if you've been playing the VIX from the short side, then you would have been buying the XVXY, which is the ProShare Short, Short-Term Futures ETF. And that ETF is up 16% year to date. The VIX is down 25% year to date. See how that works? Well, the Dow is up 2%, the S&P is up 7.5% on the year, the Nasdaq's up 15%, the Russell's up one5 and the transfer's up 8%. You have to just think of the inverse. Now, oil continues to pull back, and this morning it's down another 5 cents at 77.32. Fear of a building recession and rising rates is once again causing that demand destruction story to come to life. Remember what I said. After the gap up a couple of weeks ago, I would not be surprised to see if oil went back to fill that gap, which means we would see it trade down to 75.67. Once it fills that gap, then it'll start to move higher again. The dollar index this morning is churning, remaining well below all the trend line as it hovers around 102. We remain in the 100-103 trading range, 103 being the trend line. Gold continues to act psychotic whipping around as it tries to find stability around $2,000 an ounce. It's up $30 one day, it's down 25 the next. This morning, gold is down 20, trading right at $1,999. Talk of a more aggressive Fed will put more pressure on gold because it will cause the dollar to rally. Now, if they don't do that, uh, the dollar won't rally and gold should be okay. But you have to sit tight, pay attention to what's going on. This morning, U.S. futures are down again. Dow futures down 30, the S&P is down 3, the Nasdaq down 13, the Russell's down 3. Regions Financial, RF, uh, announced their earnings this morning, and they missed the estimates. Regions is one of those regional banks that we've been talking about in the wake of the Silicon Valley bank crisis. The stock is quoted down 2% this morning. In addition, watch for earnings from HCA, which is a healthcare name, FCX, which is a metal and miner, Procter & Gamble, which is a consumer staple, SLB, which is an oil services and equipment, and FRBK, which is another regional bank. EcoData today includes the S&P Manufacturing and Services PMI of 49 and 51.5, respectively, leaving one in contractionary territory, while the other one's in expansionary territory, again, creating some confusion. European markets are all lower, not by much, but they're in negative territories for you. It's all about the earnings and central bank policy France is showing the fastest growth since May of 22. Germany's business environment is, is turning up, led by services. Yet the UK retail sales fell by nine-tenths of a percent, worse than expected. The Bank of England is expected to raise rates again, and the ECB says that we still have a ways to go, which would suggest continued hikes, plural, with an S. The S&P closed at 4,129, down 24 points. Stocks and investors are tired. You can just feel it. The May hike is coming and the fall rate cuts are not coming. Hike and pause this year is, uh, this year is what my call is, right? As we all monitor inflation. Cleveland's Loretta Master yesterday supports another hike, while Dallas's Lori Logan comes out and favors more hikes, plural, saying that inflation has been much too high for too long. The consensus now among investors is that the elusive recession is about to, uh, to about to hit us this summer, and the eco debt is going to get weaker, which illogically will become good news, right? Think bad news is good news because the Fed will stimulate the economy 
to help it recover, which is what uh, is leading some to suggest that the, Fed, that the Fed is going to slash rates by Christmas, which I am not buying. I think they slash rates in 24, not in 2023. Twitter this morning deletes all the blue check marks for people that refuse to pay the toll, $8 a month. So I, like many, have lost my blue check. And like many, I think this is a mistake because it deletes the authenticity of the person or organization. I do, though, understand that Lonnie has allowed some to keep their check mark for free. That's interesting, no? I guess it pays as one of the benefits of being a foe, right? A friend of Elon. F-O-E. A foe. Okay, so... What do we have for dinner tonight? Well, we're going to have this easy pork loin, right? It's simple to make. If you're in a rush, you can get this done probably in a half an hour, right? Uh, and it's one, of those, uh, it's one of those quick meals that's really always a winner. For this, you need the pork loin, right? You need salt and pepper, beef broth. You need whole kernel corn. Preheat the oven to 375 degrees to get it ready for when you need it. Season the loin with just salt and pepper. Make it simple. Sear it on the stove just to get it a bit crusty on all sides. Now place it in a Pyrex baking dish, add some beef broth, just enough so that it's bathing. You don't want it swimming in the beef broth. Cover, <coughs> cover it tightly with tin foil and cook it for about 15 minutes. Then remove the tin foil and add one whole can of whole kernel corn and then put it back and continue to cook it for another 30 minutes or so. Now keep your eyes on it, right? You may want to add a little bit more beef broth if the beef broth starts to steam all the way, you can always add a little bit more beef broth. While this is cooking, make a side of rice, accompany this with uh, a steamed veggie of your choice. So in this case, French cut green beans always work well. Just steam them, a little dab of butter, salt and pepper, simple. When it's done, you want to remove it from the oven, let it sit for a minute. You can uh, slice it, you know, into pieces. You can sometimes it'll even shred if you cooked it really right. Uh, serve this over white rice. Add the corn on top with the veggies on the side. This is simple to make. Like I said, it's always a fan favorite. Uh, it shouldn't take any more than maybe 30 or 35 minutes from start to finish. In fact, I'm going to make this tonight for dinner because now that I had it and I featured it and I talked about it, it's got me going. So yes, I'm going right out uh, shopping to buy the pork loin and everything else I need. Until Monday, take good care.